when to suspect rheumatoid arthritis rheumatoid arthritis should be suspected in those with a suggestive clinical history and one or more swollen joints which is not better explained by another disease diagnosis is essentially clinical but investigations are useful in confirming the diagnosis and assessing the disease activity in 2010 american college of rheumatology in collaboration with european league against rheumatism devised a scoring system for diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis this scoring involves two clinical and two laboratory criteria clinical criteria include number and types of joint involvement and duration of symptoms while laboratory criteria include serology testing for either rheumatoid factor or anti ccp antibodies and measuring either esr or crp a score of 6 and above is diagnostic of rheumatoid arthritis coming on towards the investigations as mentioned earlier these help in confirmation of the diagnosis assessing the disease severity and not mentioned earlier certain investigations are needed to monitor drug safety rheumatoid factor is positive in 70% of cases its high titers is associated with severe disease erosions and extra articular disease anti ccp antibodies are 98% specific for rheumatoid arthritis with reasonable sensitivity that is 70 to 80% they may also predict disease progression you can find elevated acute phase reactions like reactive protein and esr but these can be normal if only acute joints are involved anemia of chronic disease and rare platelets are present X-rays show soft tissue swelling, extraarticular osteopenia, and reduced joint space in early disease process. But later on, there may be bony erosions, subluxation, or complete carpal disruption. Ultrasound and MRI, although not done routinely, can identify synovitis more accurately, especially during acute phase, and have greater sensitivity in detecting bone erosions than conventional X-rays. Ultrasound is also helpful in establishing the diagnosis of Baker's cyst in suspected cases. Patients who are suspected of having atlanto axial disease should have lateral x-ray taken in flexion and extension and an MRI of the cervical spine. Investigations like urinalysis, CBC, urea and creatinine, liver function tests and chest x-ray are needed to monitor the drug safety. Now the management. Goal of treatment is to suppress inflammation, symptom control and prevention of joint damage. Since chief biological event of rheumatoid arthritis is inflammation with overproduction of cytokines, early use of disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs and biological agents improve long-term outcomes. Disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs are first-line and should ideally be started within three months of presenting symptoms. They can take six to twelve weeks to achieve symptomatic benefit. Best results are often achieved with a combination of methotrexate, sulfasalazine, and hydroxychloroquine. Leflunomide is another option. Immunosuppression is a potentially fatal side effect of treatment, especially in combination with methotrexate, which can result in pancytopenia, increased susceptibility to infection, including atypical organisms, and neutropenic sepsis. Regular full blood count and LFT monitoring is therefore important. Other drug specific side effects include falling. Methotrexate can cause pneumonitis, so a pre-treatment chest X-ray is important. It can also cause oral ulcers, hepatotoxicity, and it is teratogenic. Sulfasalazine can cause skin rash, decrease sperm count, oral ulcers, and GI abscess. Leflunomide causes teratogenicity in both males and females. It can cause oral ulcers, elevated blood pressure, and hepatotoxicity. Hydroxychloroquine can cause retinopathy, so a pre-treatment and annual eye screening is required. In case of biological agents, these should be initiated by specialists and are indicated for patients with active disease despite adequate trial of at least two disease-modifying antirheumatic drugs. Pre-treatment screening for tuberculosis, hepatitis B, C, and HIV is essential. TNF alpha inhibitors like infliximab, etanercept, delimumab are approved by NICE as the first-line agents. Where methotrexate is contraindicated, these can be used as monotherapy. Clinical response can be striking with improved function and health outcomes, although response may be inadequate and unsustained in few patients. B cell depletion by rituximab is used in combination with methotrexate and is approved by NICE for severe active rheumatoid arthritis where disease modifying drugs and TNF alpha blockers have failed. Interleukin 6 inhibition by tocilizumab is also approved in combination with methotrexate where TNF alpha blocker has failed or is contraindicated. Monitor for hypercholesterolemia with tocilizumab. Inhibition of T-cell co-stimulation by abatacept is also licensed for active rheumatoid arthritis patients where patients have not responded to disease-modifying agents or TNF alpha blocker. Side effects of biological agents include serious infections, reactivation of tuberculosis. Therefore, it is important to screen every patient for tuberculosis and consider prophylaxis, reactivation of hepatitis B, worsening heart failure, 
hypersensitivity, injection site reactions in blood disorders, ANA and reversible SLE type illness may also have evolved. Data suggests there is no increased risk of solid organ tumors, but skin cancers may be more common. TNF inhibition do not appear to be associated with a further increase in already elevated lymphoma occurrence in rheumatoid arthritis patients. Steroids are important in the interim period when the disease modifying agent effects are not established. Their use should be avoided unless appropriately experienced in their use. They are useful for the acute exacerbations. Intraarticular steroids have a rapid but short term effect. Oral steroids like prednisolone in a dose of 7.5 mg per day may control difficult symptoms, but side effects preclude routine long term use. NSAIDs are good for symptom relief but have no effect on disease progression. Paracetamol and deep opiates are rarely effective. Disease activity should be monitored monthly in active cases and every 6 months in controlled cases. The 28 Joint Disease Activity Score is widely used to assess disease activity, response to treatment, and need for biological therapy. It involves counting the number of swollen and tender joints in the upper limbs and knees and combining this with the ESR in the patient's assessment of activity of their arthritis on a visual analog scale where 0 indicates no symptoms and 100 indicates the worst symptoms possible. This data is then entered into a calculator which generates a numerical score. The higher the value, the more active is the disease. Treatment should be escalated when the disease control is unsatisfactory. Other measures in the management include physiotherapy, occupational therapy like aids and splints. Surgery may be needed in some cases like synovectomy to relieve pain, improve function and prevent deformity. Joint replacement, excision of metatarsal heads in patient with subluxation of metatarsal calendial joints and neurosurgical intervention in atlantoaxial subluxation. As mentioned earlier, atherosclerosis is accelerated in rheumatoid arthritis and there is increased risk of cardiovascular and cerebrovascular disease, so manage the risk factors. And since in addition to increasing the risk of cardiovascular disease, smoking also increases symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, it is important to advise about cessation of smoking.